So, continuing our study of A star algorithm, uh, there has been an interest in finding variations of A star where the space requirement is lower, but at the expense of time, uh, obviously, because you cannot have a free lunch. But we want to maintain the admissibility of the algorithm. We are still interested in the optimal path. We are willing to spend more time and we want to use less space and the implication of that is that we will be able to solve problems which are larger and larger in terms of the size of the state space essentially. So, let us look at some linear versions of A star. We had already seen that when a function is more informed, when is it more informed? When h 2 of n is always greater than h 1 of n for all n. We had studied this that a more informed function uh, explores uh, lesser of the space essentially. But of course, there is a limit to how much more you can be informed and one way we tried to do this was by using W A star. So, that the value of h increases but at, at some point it crosses the h star value and therefore, it is no longer admissible. But the more informed version does explore less of the space essentially. So, we have seen this already earlier. In weighted a star we can shrink this further, but we lose on admissibility as we saw with the example where it found a longer path essentially. The search frontiers in general turn out to be exponential in nature and we saw that when we were talking about best per search, uh, the search frontier could look like this because it is an odd shape because the heuristic function may take it to different parts of the search space, uh, but in general it turns out to be uh, exponential. So, we are trying to uh, reduce on that. So, we also saw when we compared looked at this example that that uh, best first has a smaller search space than A star and of course, W A star was somewhere in between. Best first has lesser space than uh, A star, uh, W A star has lesser space than A star also and all of them have more space requirement as compared to branch and bound. So, we saw those four examples. So, now let us look at algorithms which will save on space. Uh, the space complexity of the al algorithm is often exponential because we can very rarely find perfect heuristic functions. If we could find a perfect heuristic function, any of these algorithms would work. In fact, hill climbing will also work essentially, but we do not unfortunately. So, we prompted us to look at uh, search algorithms like hill climbing, beam search, taboo search, simulated annealing when we were looking at best first search essentially. Because we were trying to save on space essentially. Remember, hill climbing was a constant space algorithm. We also looked at population based methods like genetic algorithms and end colony optimization, which had in some sense constant space also, but they did not guarantee optimality. Are there space saving versions of A star where they are admissible essentially, perhaps at the ex expense of time complexity? And we take a cue from the algorithm that we had looked at towards the beginning of the course, which is depth first iterative deepening or DFID. And if you remember what DFID was that it was a series of depth first searches and uh, its behavior was like breadth first search because it went down to the space level by level, which means it always found the optimal path. So, we will take look at a variation of that to begin with. Uh, so, this is a recap of what depth bounded depth first search did that you had a bound and you searched inside that bound, but using only depth first search. So, do DFS with a depth bound D, it requires linear space because it is DFS. Remember that the open of DFS goes only linearly, but it's, it was not complete and uh, does not guarantee the shortest path. I mean, it is not even complete essentially. And then we extended that to DFID, depth first iterative deepening. And we said that we start with a depth bound of 1 and then increase the depth bound by 1 
in every cycle so that you first look at parts of length 1 then you look at parts of length 2 and so on and so forth. So, we want to adapt this algorithm when we have edge costs involved and that algorithm we will see shortly. So, we had already seen all this earlier. So, it is a series of depth bounded searches that require linear space and what the, when the path is found it, it is the shortest path. So, this was shortest in terms of the number of uh, hops in the path essentially. Now, we have to also accommodate edge costs. Then we had seen uh, this was done earlier as well that BFID the extra work is not significant. It is only B over B minus 1 times the breadth first search uh, uh, time requirement. The time requirement was only marginally higher, but the space requirements, the space savings were quite significant, which is why DFID is a uh, fairly popular algorithm. The variation of DFID when we look at uh, edge costs is called iterative deepening A star. It is very similar to DFID. It was given to us by Richard Koff, uh, who did a lot of work in search algorithms as part of his PhD. It is designed to save on space by doing a series of depth first searches exactly like DFID. Unlike DFID which uses depth as a parameter, IDSR uses F values to determine how far it should look ahead essentially. So, IDSR initially sets a bound of f of s. Remember that f of s is the estimated uh, distance to the goal which is equal to h of s as mentioned in the next line. Uh, and that is that is the smallest cost path that you can imagine because it that is a optimal or uh, it underestimates the optimal cost. So, remember that h of s is less than equal to h star of s. So, you cannot you can't get a optimal path of length less than h of s. So, we start with h of s. At best, if the heuristic function is good, we may find a path. Otherwise, we will increase the h value a little bit. Essentially. What it does is that it extends the bound to the next unexplored f value essentially. Instead of adding plus 1 in like in DFID, we extend it to the next uh, this thing. So, the depth bound is increased to the f value of the cheapest unexpanded node on open essentially. And otherwise, it does a series of depth, depth first searches exactly like DFID. And when it finds a solution, it would find the shortest path solution essentially. So, this is how uh, IDSR looks when you look at the search space. Uh, at any given cutoff, which is shown by this oval, gray colored oval, uh, it explores all the nodes that are in green in a depth first fashion. Okay. So, basically it goes down some path, then backtracks and goes down another path, then backtracks and goes down another path and so on. So, maybe we will see an implementation of this uh, uh, and see how it repeatedly does a series of depth first searches of increasing depth essentially. So, the boundary is shown in oval here and in the next cycle what this will do is that let us say this is a node closest to the boundary, it will extend the boundary to that much and uh, then do another cycle of depth first searches essentially, another cycle of depth first search. And it in this fashion it iteratively expands the distance. The problem with IDA star is that even when the space, space grows quadratically, which is what we will see in a city like map, it tends to grow quadratically. The farther you go away, the number of nodes are like square of the distance. The DFS algorithm can spend a lot of time exploring these different paths in a closed list uh, if a close is not maintained. And we had seen in the ID, DFID that we do not want to. Uh, maintain this closed list because it prevented us from finding the shortest path. So, we had seen this earlier and the problem with then is then it 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 does a lot of repeated searches. So, it, it looks at every node and looks at every different ways that you can reach that node that the number of cycles become too large especially if the nodes all have different value. So, in every cycle it will extend the f value to the next node and then search the entire space up to that point essentially. 
one option would be to extend the search space by a certain constant amount each time with a, some compromise on the cost essentially. So, we can see that by a diagram here that instead of ex, ex, extending, so the inner oval is the search that you have just finished and in the next cycle you are extending the boundary by an amount which is delta essentially, you can decide as to what is delta. That is the will determine the loss of optimality. So, instead of just extending it to the closest uh, f value, you are extending it by a constant amount delta. So, that the outer oval is the new boundary and you can see that if you were doing that first search here, it is possible that it will find this path uh, because you know if let us say it is going on this direction and searching like this and find this path and it will miss out on a node which is actually closer to. Uh, uh, or which has a uh, shorter uh, cost or, or lower cost essentially. But so, we are paying a price essentially in terms of accuracy, uh, but we are limiting this extra cost by deciding what should be delta essentially. So, that was an algorithm that uh, Richard Koff has given us. He gave us another algorithm called recursive best first search. So, idea star has linear space requirements as we have seen being depth first in nature, but it has no sense of direction because it is depth first in nature. Recursive best first search is an algorithm given by Korf in 1991 and it is a linear space that is the important part best first. It is also has a sense of direction. So, it is a bit like hill climbing uh, with backtracking. It explores new nodes in the best first order and expands fewer nodes than iterative deepening, which is IDA star. So, it is like hill climbing with backtracking and we will see a short example, backtracking if no child is best on open. So, remember that the open for hill climbing is only the successors of the current node, it is a local search algorithm. So, this is also going to be like a local search algorithm. So, it is going to be like hill climbing, but if none of the best, uh, uh, none of the successors is, is a better node, it can uh, roll back essentially. Except that instead of backtracking as depth first search does, RVF rolls back search to a node. So, it kind of deletes those nodes that it had visited, but while doing so, it backs up the lowest value for each node from its children to update the value of the parent. So, this is I think best illustrated by an example and this is a example that we are looking at. Uh, we started, so that is a start node here and we are searching this in a hill climbing like fashion, except that we are maintaining uh, a linear uh, set of open essentially, uh, which is what depth first search would have done. The difference between depth first search and RVFS is that depth first search is blind, it always let us say in our figures always goes to the left side of the tree, whereas this is like uh, informed that it opens no nodes in the best first fashion. So, let us say it started with this cost uh, node with f value of 50 and then it went to this node value of 59 which was the best successor. So, remember that it, it is the best successor, it is not necessarily better and we had kind of observed that f values increase as we go towards the goal. So, that is to be expected of f values. So, but it is still going to the best successor and what RBFS does is it maintains at all times the second best node that it could have visited. So, when it finds this node of 55, uh, it marks 59 as the second best node essentially. Then it looks at the children of 55 and it finds that uh, uh, there is a node 56 which is better than the second best. As long as you are better than the second best, it goes down this path. So, from 56 and it goes to another 56 and 57 and 58. At some point it discovers that the three nodes that are the children of this node with 58 all have a value which is higher than the second best. So, what RBFS does 
is that okay I am going to shift my attention to that node with a value 59 and I will just delete all these nodes uh, which I have uh, searched. In the process you will roll back the values going from bottom to the top and this is what happens. Uh, so, you roll back this value is become 61 then for the instead of 57 this becomes 60 because that is the best successor now. So, th this went from uh, 58 to 61. So, it is not the best anymore this is the best and therefore, that is what is rolled back here. So, this value of 60 goes back all the way up and then when search is about to re restart this value that was 55 earlier is now upgraded to 60 because it is a better estimate and now search goes off in this new direction. Yeah, so, uh, so if you see the shaded arrows on the left hand side from every node which is the pink node is getting the best value from its children and we do this from bottom to top. So, this in this node with value 58 which is the lowest uh, pink node its value becomes 61 because we know that if you are going to go through that node one of its children which is 63, 61, 62 the best is 61. Now, this is 61 its its sibling is 60 and an, another sibling is uh, 64. 60 is the best. So, 60 gets updated to its parent which had an original value of 57 and now it's become 60. Now, the siblings are 67 and 60 again. So, again the value of its parent which was 56 now gets updated to 60 essentially. It could have come from this side or it could have come from the other side it does not matter because it has now two children whose value is 60. Then again its parent which was 56 becomes 60 and then its parent which was 55 and the other two children are 61 each. So, the best value is 60. So, which is why this node is missing. So, it has rolled back the search and then it is gone off in a new direction. The problem with RBFS was also similar to what was in IDA star is that especially in search spaces where the different paths are similar in nature, it will keep repeating it will switch from one to the other go back to the other. So, for example, if this 59 were to increase to let us say 62 somewhere down this path so let us say 63 it becomes here the best node then again it will roll back and again it will start from here. So, this kind of thrashing behavior was observed when we implement this RBFS which is why eventually we looked at newer algorithms. So, this is a small exercise problem uh, uh, some space being explored by RBFS. We have seen that uh, it has gone from 500 to 550 to 570 to 590. So, just what show us what will happen after you do two more expansions of this thing and then which is the next node that RBFS will pick up essentially. So, I will leave this as a small exercise to be done to make sure that you have understood uh, uh, what this thing. So, this, this shows in some sense a larger part of the graph than that was actually explored. The graph that has been ex actually explored so far is in solid uh, circles. The dash circles are things which have not yet been explored essentially. So, which is the next node it will explore, which is the next node after that it will explore and what will this graph look like after those two expansions that is what I would like you to do. There will be some rollback involved as you can imagine. Okay. So, next we will look at something called the monotone condition or the consistency condition when A star will find the optimal path to every node it picks from open which is what Dijkstra's algorithm do does essentially. So, we will look at uh, that next and see its implications as well.